Hello and welcome to video lecture series in sociology. Today we are going to discuss chapter 8 titled as social moments from your textbook social change and development in India. For understanding we have divided this chapter into 6 parts. So far we have discussed about the definition and features of a social moment or what is meant by a social moment. In this particular lecture, we will discuss that how do social movements bring about change in society? How are they decisive in changing social ways and established patterns? And we will also discuss about the different types of social movements or categories of social movements. How do we identify social movements or differentiate social movements on the basis of their goals and aims? As a student of sociology, we are interested in exploring sources of social order and change. We are also interested in finding out reasons behind social change and study the patterns of these changes in terms of their causes and consequences. We know that social movements bring about changes. They are forms of collective action to reorganize or modify the existing structures in society. But it is also important for us to understand the difference between social change and a social movement. Social change is a broad concept. It is an ongoing and continuous process. Social change refers to transformation or change or alteration in social structure, culture and patterns of behavior that have happened over a period of time. At times, social change is a result of some planned action or it is intentional in nature, but it may not always be the case. Many of the changes in society are unintended consequences of our planned action or intended actions. Social change is some total or resultant of a number of individual or collective efforts made across time and space. Social change may be a consequence of many factors and social movement is one such factor that can bring about social change. Social movements are vehicles of social change. They are directed towards achieving particular aim or goal in society. It is quite natural to ask that what factors bring about social change. Let us discuss some of these factors briefly here. Social change comes about as a result of new ideas that influence various aspects of society in different ways. For instance, the nature and structure of European society was shaped by the philosophical and intellectual ideas of Enlightenment age. The modern and secular ideas spread during the social reform movement in India also led to radical changes in Indian society. One can see that development or advancement in the field of technology also at times leads to social changes. The industrial revolution and concomitant changes in 19th and 20th century were instrumental in shaping nature of modern societies. These factors or forces have in fact changed the entire course of human history towards industrialism and modernization. Other factors of social change include environmental factors to a large extent that influence the structure and demographic composition of various societies. For example, conducive environment are more hospitable for human settlements. Acting as a pull factor, they lead to rise in population and whenever there is a hostile condition, environmental disasters like earthquakes, tsunami, etc., they can destroy entire regions or cities and force people from these areas to other areas. Some other factors responsible for change are government policies, programs and initiatives and also international relations such as war between two countries. There can be other factors and sources of social change with varying degree of impact, intensity and significance. However, most significant and sustainable changes come about as a result of change in the ideas and thinking of a society and its people that can actually change the course of events. One such example is the intellectual and philosophical revolution in Europe that ushered in modernity and changed the course of western society and later the entire world forever. If you look at India, there are many factors that have played an important role in shaping the nature of Indian society. Some of these were initiated by the British during the colonial rule, such as industrialization. Other changes followed it, the process of urbanization, modernization, westernization and Sanskritization. Some of these changes came about as social movements like modernization of tradition and Sanskritization. For the students of sociology, it is important to understand the significance causes and consequences of these social moments. There are enough instances in history to establish that social movements have always influenced society in one way or the other. 
If on one hand they have resulted in radical transformation of social structure, then on the other social movements have been source of direct influence or indirect influence on people's behavior and perception, ultimately leading to social change. If we go a couple of centuries back, French Revolution was a violent culmination of number of social movements that had come together that intended to challenge authority of the king and overthrow the atrocious monarch. In French Revolution, people in France took collective action to establish liberty, equality, fraternity and abolish monarchy forever. Although they resorted to violent means, but struggle put forward by them was revolutionary in nature. At around the same time, industrial revolution brought about massive changes in British society also. With growing industrialization, a large number of people migrated to cities and urban areas from rural areas. These poor laborers and artisans who worked in the cities protested against the inhuman conditions in which they were working in factories. Many a times these protest or movements were suppressed by the government. These movements were seen as a threat to the established order and peace in society. These workers movements were perceived as disturbing the social harmony and bringing disorder. But on the contrary, the Marxists perceived these very social movements as expressions of discontent and resentment among people against the exploitation and oppression of the working class by the capitalist class. Depending upon the scope, nature, intention of a social movement, which means the goal or aim that any type of social movement wants to achieve or tries to bring about, sociologists classify social movements into different types. What are these types? These types are reformist movements, revolutionary movements, redemptive movements, alternative movements and reactionary movements. Let us discuss these various types of social movements one by one. To begin with, reformist movements. Reformist social movements strive to change the existing social and political arrangements or structures gradually. Seeking to change some aspects of social structure, reformist movements advocate for change in prevailing norms and laws. They target society, that is, they try to bring change at the societal level. But the nature and scope of change that they try to bring is limited. The reformist movements aim to improve the existing system by introducing new elements or modifying the existing elements in the structure. But they never aim to change the existing power relationships completely. Their common goal is that social structure and arrangements can be made more effective by extending rights and privileges to different groups equally. Some of the important examples of reformist social movements are movement for linguistic reorganization of Indian states, that is organization of states on the basis of language. The right to information RTI campaign is another important example. You can also include movements such as consumer rights protection, labor movement, human rights, students movements, women's movements. But there is no guarantee that these movements will continue to remain non-violent. At times, many of such movements acquire radical form of action and become violent in nature. Their aim may remain same, but the means to achieve their goal or aim becomes violent. The second category of a social movement is the revolutionary social movement. Unlike the reformist movement which bring about gradual change, the revolutionary movement seeks to bring about a total or radical change in society. These movements attempt to transform the existing social relations or structures or arrangements or patterns completely. Revolutionary movements aim at changing the social arrangements and replace it with what they understand as desirable. The revolutionary movements emerge as a rebellious action, where people even resort to violence against oppression by the ruling elite or against conquest or domination of people. Their aim is complete transformation or change and their target is society at large. In modern times, such movements happen when a group captures the source of legitimate authority in a society, say uh, political power or the power occupied by the state and then they try to overthrow it. The example is the political coup. Commonly, the revolutionary social movements emerge whenever there is a wide gap between rich and poor people and one can see that poor are being exploited and oppressed by the rich people. These movements can also happen whenever there is a suppression of human rights and social and civil rights of people. There have also been instances of emergence of revolutionary movements whenever the colonizers exploited the natural resources and suppressed the rights of the indigenous population. More often than not, revolutionary movements are violent in nature. French Revolution is a classic case. 
So, the other examples include the Bolshevik revolution in Russia that removed and overthrew the Tsar and established communism. The Naxalite movement in India that seeks to remove the oppressive landlords and challenge the authority of the state is also an example of a revolutionary movement. The third category is the redemptive social movements. Unlike the other two reform and revolutionary social movements that bring change at the macro level, redemptive social movement aims to bring about change in the personal consciousness and actions of the individual members, say religious movements. These movements attempt to alter life of people by bringing about inner changes. The target group for the redemptive social movement is the individual. These movements attempt to bring about total change in the individual personality by profoundly altering the behavior and ideology of the individual concern. There are large number of religious, spiritual and therapeutic movements that seek to bring about complete change in the lifestyle and thinking of individuals for the lifetime. People seeking peace and harmony voluntarily adopt the prescribed lifestyle even if it is rigorous in nature. At their core lies spiritual or supernatural belief system. These movements when emphasize on conversion or advocate a person to adopt a way of life, they expect a complete transformation of the individual, a kind of radical inner change or makeover, distinct and detached from it, past. The next type of social movements are alternative movements. These movements seek to change some or limited aspect of people's behavior. These movements advocate for minor yet significant changes that can prove to be beneficial for people and society in general. Alternative social movements tend to bring about partial or limited change and their target like redemptive movement is the individual. These movements are not hostile and pose minimum or no threat to society or existing power structures. Alternative movements seek limited change and thus are not concerned with changing the entire system at large or be revolutionary or reactionary in nature. They have narrow focus and hence their actions are also concentrated and limited to the focus or target area only. An example of such a movement is the movement against those who litter garbage in public areas or movement against drinking and driving. The move against drinking and driving targets only a limited section of population, say the people, those who drive and for a limited change in behavior that is they advocate do not drive after consuming alcohol. Other such campaigns like say no smoking in public areas is another classic case of an alternative movement. These are small drives against specific behavior but they have significant implications for society in general. Yet another type of movement or the last category, the fifth category is the expressive or reactionary movement. These movements are not organized to bring about changes in power structures or challenge the established authority. These movements are an expression of powerlessness, discontent, alienation or dissatisfaction about something. Say an expression of dissatisfaction of any change in public or social policy. It is an expression of public anger against the apathy of the state. So we see that social movements generally are a challenge to the established authority, structures and patterns in society. It can also at times emerge as a resistance to change which we call as counter social movements. Counter movements mostly involve people who directly or indirectly get affected by some actions or events in society. For instance, a number of environmental movements have been a consequence of the impact of so called developmental projects taken up by the government which has led to displacement of a large number of people. Some examples include Narmada Bachao Andolan and Tehri Dam protest. To conclude this lecture, let's summarize what we discussed here. We started our discussion with understanding the emergence of discipline of sociology and it was seen as a response to study social change and social order brought about by various movements in Europe, particularly social, political, economic and intellectual and how Indian society also changed because of certain social movements. Then we discussed about various types of social movements depending upon their scope, target and the kind of change they attempt to bring about in society. In the next part of this chapter, we will try discussing about theories of social movements and also distinguish between old and new types of social movements. Till then, you can enjoy reading this part of the chapter. Thank you.